in the modern pop culture medium of comic book fiction, we find the character, the Incredible Hulk. Hulk's famed first appearance was in The Incredible Hulk, Volume 1, Issue 1, dated May 1962, written by Marvel Comics founding mogul Stan Lee, 1922 until 2018, drawn and co-plotted by renowned comic artist Jack Kirby, 1917 until 1994. Writing in a 2008 retrospective, Tom DeFalco recalled, based on their collaboration on the Fantastic Four, Stan Lee worked with Jack Kirby. Instead of a team that fought traditional Marvel monsters, however, Lee decided that this time he wanted to feature a monster as the hero. In 1974's Origins of Marvel Comics, Stan Lee reflected on the development of the idea for the Hulk. For a long time, I'd been aware of the fact that people were more likely to favor someone who was less than perfect. I've always had a soft spot in my heart for the Frankenstein monster. No one could ever convince me that he was the bad guy. He never wanted to hurt anyone. He merely groped his torturous way through a second life trying to defend himself, trying to come to terms with those who sought to destroy him. I decided I might as well borrow from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde as well. Our protagonist would constantly change from his normal identity to his superhuman alter ego and back again. In 1991, Les Daniels quoted Jack Kirby as adding to this premise that as long as we're experimenting with radioactivity there's no telling what may happen or how much our advancements in science may cost us. Lee has also compared Hulk to the golem of Jewish mythology. The protagonist, Dr. Robert Bruce Banner, was established as a nuclear physicist working on a military project at Desert Base in New Mexico to develop a gamma ray bomb. Paul Villard, a French chemist and physicist, had discovered this phenomenon in 1900 while studying radium and gamma radiation was first classified as such in 1903 by Ernest Rutherford as being the most matter-penetrating form of decay radiation of the three then known, including also alpha rays that can be stopped by a few centimeters of air or by skin, and beta rays that can be stopped by a few millimeters of aluminum. Gamma rays are ionizing radiation and are thus biologically hazardous. Due to their high penetration power, they can damage bone marrow and internal organs. Unlike alpha and beta rays, they pass easily through the body and thus pose a formidable radiation protection challenge, requiring shielding made from dense materials such as lead or concrete. When gamma radiation breaks DNA molecules, a cell may be able to repair the damaged genetic material within limits. A 2003 study by Rothcam and Lobrich shows that this repair process works quickly after high dose exposure, but is much slower, thus taking longer, in the case of a low dose exposure. In astrophysics, Gamma rays are conventionally defined as having photon energies above 100 kilo electron volts, while radiation below 100 kilo electron volts is classified as X-rays. Gamma rays are emitted in a hypernova, which occurs as a massive star collapses into a black hole. 
these long duration gamma ray bursts produce a total energy output of about 1044 joules as much energy as our Sun will produce in its entire lifetime but in a period of only 20 to 40 seconds when such a narrowly directed beam happens to be pointed toward the earth it can be detected even if originating from distances of up to 10 billion light years away which is close to the edge of the visible universe notable artificial sources of gamma rays include fission such as that which occurs in nuclear reactors and high energy physics experiments such as neutral pion decay and nuclear fusion during the experimental detonation of his gamma ray bomb banner rushes into the danger zone and saves teenager rick jones who is driven into the testing field on a dare from his friends banner pushes jones into a trench but is then himself hit with the full force of the blast and although miles away from ground zero absorbs massive amounts of gamma radiation Charles Q Coy in 2008 explains that gamma rays are so powerful 10,000 times more powerful than visible light that they can even convert energy into matter thus the matter Hulk gets the stronger Hulk gets Banner awakens later seemingly unscathed but that night transforms into a giant lumbering gray behemoth a pursuing soldier dubs the creature a Hulk originally it was believed that Banner's transformations into the Hulk were caused by sunset and undone at sunrise but later after Rick witnessed Banner turn into Hulk by daylight following a failed attempt to shoot the Hulk into space the transformation was found to be caused by anger in Incredible Hulk number two the Hulk started to appear with green skin Banner was cured in the Incredible Hulk number four but chose to restore Hulk's powers with Banner's intelligence the gamma ray machine needed to carry out the transformation induced side effects that made Banner temporarily sick and weak when returned to his normal state in the Avengers number one September 1963 the Hulk became a founding member of the eponymous superhero team by Avengers number three 1963 Banner had realized that his transformations were triggered by surges of adrenaline in response to feelings of fear, pain, or anger. Also in Avengers number three, overuse of the gamma ray machine rendered the Hulk an uncontrollable, rampaging monster, subject to spontaneous changing. By Tales to Astonish number 59, September 1964 the Hulk appeared as an antagonist for giant man and had fully become what has since come to be called the rampaging Hulk it was during this time that the Hulk developed a more savage and childlike personality shifting away from his original portrayal as a brutish but not entirely unintelligent character also his memory both long-term and short-term would now become markedly impaired in the Hulk state tales to astonish number 64 February 1965 was the last Hulk story to feature him speaking in complete sentences although his age is never specified in 1962 when Bruce Banner first became the Hulk he could have been no older than 20 
considering that prior to Bruce's birth, his father, Brian Banner, had worked at Los Alamos, New Mexico for the United States government, developing a clean way to create nuclear energy. The Army component of this project was designated the Manhattan District, and Manhattan Project gradually superseded the official code name, which had been Development of Substitute Materials. The Los Alamos Laboratory, also known as Project Y, was a secret laboratory established by the Manhattan Project and operated by the University of California during World War II. Its mission was to design and build the first atomic bombs. From 1942 to 1946, the project was under the direction of Major General Leslie Groves of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Robert Oppenheimer was its first director, serving from 1943 to December 1945, when he was succeeded by Norris Bradbury. Project Y also researched the Super, a hydrogen bomb that would use a fission bomb to ignite a nuclear fusion reaction in deuterium and tritium. A new Z division was created to control testing, stockpiling, and bomb assembly activities which were concentrated at Sandia base. According to the canon literature on the matter, around the time of Bruce's conception, his father, Brian Banner, was drunk at work and accidentally overloaded some machinery, causing an explosion and resulting in his being court-martialed and sacked from the atomic bomb project. Around this time, Rebecca Edith Banner, Brian's wife, announced that she was pregnant. Even though he had been behind a shield when the overload occurred and multiple doctors examined him and found nothing, Brian still felt that some amount of radiation had gotten through and affected his genetic structure, and due to complications during the birth of their child, Robert Bruce Banner, in Dayton, Ohio, Brian became obsessive and paranoid that he had passed along a mutation, or monster, gene to his unwanted son. Brian encouraged Rebecca to leave the infant Bruce otherwise alone, attended only by an elderly nanny who showed him no affection. One Christmas morning, when Bruce was around four years old, he woke up early and snuck downstairs, opened one of his presents, which was an erector set, and managed to put together an intricate structure in a short time. When Brian came down and saw it, he became furious and smashed the structure. Brian started yelling at Bruce and calling him a freak, saying that a child his age should not be so creative. Brian had become more convinced that the radiation from his accident had altered Bruce's brain, making him super smart. When Rebecca heard the commotion and saw what was happening, she tried to calm Brian down and protect Bruce, but Brian hit her. When Bruce got scared and tried to run to his mother, Brian hit him too. Brian looked at Bruce and called him an inhuman monster and also admitted he never wanted a child in the first place. Around a year later, following repeated physical and mental abuse, Rebecca finally decided to pack up suitcases for her and Bruce and tried to get them both away from Brian forever by leaving him and running away. As she is outside with Bruce, Brian catches them at the car before they can leave and starts to struggle with Rebecca again. Bruce yells to his father to let his mother go and that he will be good, but Brian throws Rebecca to the ground, smashing her head in and killing her by accident. 
Bruce runs to her side and just sits there frozen in shock beside her lifeless body. It's at this point where Bruce shuts down his emotions and becomes a repressed personality. After that, Brian was placed under arrest, but still managed to stop Bruce from testifying against him at his trial for Rebecca's murder, saying that if Bruce did so, he would go to hell. Terrified, Bruce perjured himself, testifying that his father never abused him or Rebecca, and that his mother tried to run away for no reason. Brian escaped conviction due to lack of evidence, but was later arrested when he drunkenly boasted about beating the law by bullying his son. Brian is imprisoned and later placed in a mental institution, while Bruce is sent to live with his aunt and mother's sister, Susan Drake. After 15 years of confinement, Brian, who is believed fit for reintroduction into society, is released into a reluctant Bruce's care. Living with Bruce caused Brian's delusions to begin again, and on the anniversary of Rebecca's death, Brian and Bruce engaged in a verbal and later physical fight at Rebecca's grave on a stormy night. During the fight, Bruce accidentally killed Brian by knocking him headfirst into Rebecca's headstone. But Bruce repressed the memories of Brian's stay with him and his subsequent death, making himself believe that, as the two of them fought at Rebecca's grave, Brian had simply beat him and left, later being killed by muggers. It was around this time Bruce went to work at desert base in New Mexico, developing a next-level WMD for the U.S. military, ostensibly carrying on his father's work. In the year 2000, it is revealed that Bruce Banner, in addition to his transformations into the Incredible Hulk, is suffering from amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, also known as motor neuron disease, MND, or Lou Gehrig's disease. Although the cause is not known in 90% to 95% of cases, it is believed to involve both genetic and environmental factors. The remaining 5 to 10% of cases are directly inherited from a person's parents. Hulk's longtime nemesis, the leader, was able to devise a cure for this disease using genes taken from the corpse of Brian Banner, and Mr. Fantastic, leader of the Fantastic Four, managed to cure the Hulk by instructing Ant-Man in shrinking down to a point where he can insert Brian's gene samples into Bruce's DNA. The energy surge released when the Hulk returned to human form infused Brian's healthy DNA with Bruce's own system. 